Today we're going to create a very, very simple human rig. And then we're going to parent our mesh to that rig. So to start off with, I want you to note that our base mesh here, our model, is 1.51 meters tall, which is a pretty realistic height for a human. That uh, can be very important when creating characters uh, to create a model that is a realistic size. So now I'm going to add an armature object, Shift A. Let's see, let's turn on our screencast keys so you can see what I'm doing. Shift A, and we'll go to the armature object, and that creates a very large single bone here. And now I'm going to go down to my armature settings, and I'm going to check this box in front so that that bone is visible through the mesh no matter where I'm looking. All right, and I'm going to change my pivot point to the median point of the bone so that I'm not just always scaling things from the 3D cursor. And I'm going to constrain my axes a lot in uh, modifying this armature and in moving things around so that things stay perfectly centered. So to start off with, I'm going to move this bone in the z-axis, so G to move and Z to constrain my z-axis. I'm going to move this up to where, about where I think the base of the spine should be. The base of this bone will be the base of the spine. And I can probably scale that down even a little bit more. Now I'm going to tab into edit mode. Every bone has a base and a tip. And I'm going to start with the tip here in extruding my bones out. But first I'm going to rename this bone. Naming is very, very important with an armature in Blender. So I'm going to go over here to the bone properties. And I'm going to call this spine.000. If I can manage to type it. Then I'm going to select the tip. And I'm going to extrude and I'm going to tap Z to constrain myself to, again, just the Z axis. Now I'm going to go into a side view, and I'm going to take this joining tip slash base here and kind of curve it the way a spine curves. I'm going to do one more extrusion here to about the base of the neck. Then I'm going to give myself a couple of neck bones. So I'm just tapping E each time, and then I'm going to create a head bone. And because I named the first bone spine.000, you can see over here and up here that the second bone is spine.001, spine.002, 3, 4, and 5. And those are good names for those bones. All right, so now we need to start with some of the mirrored symmetrical bones. So I'm going to come over here to my tool settings and I'm going to check this box, x-axis mirror. Alternatively, there's a button up here that does the same thing, this little butterfly with an x next to it. And with that checked, let's see, I'm going to move that down a little bit, gz. With that checked, I can create symmetrical sides across the x-axis to this armature. So I'm going to hold down shift and then tap E again. Shift E gives me a mirrored extrusion. So that will help me to create these bones. And I'm going to name these as I go so that my naming conventions um, are easy to keep track of and I don't have to do a lot of tedious renaming later. So I'll call this shoulder underscore L. And I'll call this one shoulder underscore R. And it's important to have capitalization and spelling the same. A typo here can cause problems. Let's check the shoulder location from the side. That looks pretty good to me. Now, I don't have to hold shift again to do another extrusion. Um, I just have to tap E, and you can see because the names are symmetrical, shoulder L and shoulder R, um, the extrusions continue mirroring. So now I have an elbow here that I need to kind of get in place, and that looks good. Extrude the forearm. Let's rename these bones. So 
arm dot upper underscore l arm dot upper underscore r forearm underscore l forearm underscore r let me check that my capitalization is the same there it is okay and then I'm going to extrude a hand let's see looks like my wrists need to come forward in Y and the hands as well that looks pretty good so we'll call this hand underscore L hand underscore R okay and as I said this is going to be a very simplified mesh so we're not gonna do fingers we're not gonna do toes now I'm going to extrude the hips so shift E again because I need to start a new mirrored set hip underscore L hip underscore R and I'm just going to fast forward a little bit so that we can get through these legs pretty quickly Okay, so we now have the armature created, and if we control, whoop, control tab into pose mode, then you'll notice that we can pose these objects by rotating them. And these bones have a parent-child relationship, so the hand is a child of the forearm, the forearm is a child of the upper arm, the upper arm is a child of the shoulder. So if the shoulder moves, all of those bones move, but if the forearm moves, only its child, the hand moves. Um, so that's a really handy relationship to have. One thing um, is that if we move the base of the spine the legs don't necessarily come with it. So we can fix that by tabbing into edit mode, selecting a hip, shift clicking to select the base of the spine and hitting control P and making that base spine apparent. So we'll click keep offset and now the whole thing moves if we move the spine, uh, which we may or may not want, but uh, that's that's how to fix that little disconnect there. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to parent our mesh to the bones so back to object mode select the mesh shift click to select the armature and hit control P and down here under our armature deform options we have this with automatic weights if we click on that then we can now enter pose mode on the armature and we can move the entire mesh and it's actually pretty good it's nice to have this little pre-bend in all the joints so that blender later when we get a more sophisticated rig blender will be able to tell what direction the joints should be able to move um, I'm gonna mention one more thing before we finish up here weight painting let's go back to our mesh um, if we want to go into weight painting mode we can come down, come down here to our object data properties and we can select a vertex group that was created when we parented the mesh with automatic weights and we can see what sort of influence the bone that vertex group is named after should have so 
forearm underscore L influences everything in red and to a lesser extent its influence uh, fades as as it fades to blue um, so we obviously we have some painting controls here if we want our painting to like our painting of the left bone to also paint the same sort of influence for the right bone uh, where it's where it's located then we can come down here to our symmetry settings and we can click this mirror vertex groups and hit the X uh, and now if I were to for instance go in and paint some more influence for this forearm underscore L and then we have a look at the influence of forearm underscore R you can see that it has a mirrored influence over there that of course is not a good whoop that's not a good weight paint for that so we really don't want that to stick around um, I also really like to use an add-on in here I'll show you what it's called if I just type PAL we've got this paint palettes add-on you can check that box and in weight paint mode it gives you this paint tab here what that does is that just allows you to select the amount of weight that you want to paint. So if I select zero here, I can come back in and I can just paint a zero influence where I had it. And then you can see again, the symmetry has taken care of the other side as well. Um, and that's a little kind of a really basic overview of some weight painting principles. One more thing that I like to do that can be really handy Let's go back into object mode on this mesh here. I'm going to go to edit and unlock my object modes. What that allows me to do is it allows me to, for instance, go into pose mode on my armature here. And then I can, with a single click, select the mesh instead, which, of course, doesn't have a pose mode. It allows me to switch object modes with selection. Now the advantage of that is if I was just in pose mode on the armature and I go into weight paint mode on the mesh, you can see here that this bone that I had selected is still selected. And moreover, I can still pose it even though I'm in weight painting mode. If I control click, I can select any of the bones and it will show me their influence. Control click and it will allow me to pose them and I can also paint on their influence and that is really handy to be able to both pose change the pose and paint influence for bones uh, without having to worry about selecting a vertex group so that's a really basic uh, rig a really basic parenting of the armature and a couple of tips about weight painting I hope this is helpful and we'll see you around